Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Moyna Bass Fishers. I am Jim Moyna, professional bass fisherman. In this video, we're gonna talk about my uh, performance and finish at the 2024 Bassmaster Open on Leech Lake. I finished 32nd place out of 203 boats, uh, which, uh, you know, it's in the money. They pay down 45 spots, but, you know, being that it's home court, you know, I'm just, I really wish I would have done better. Uh, I did start the tournament on day one in 65th place, so I went from 65th up to 32nd place. My first day catch was 15 pounds, 13 ounces, which consisted of two smallies, like around four pounds a piece, maybe even a little better. And then three large mouths that were 15 and a quarter to 15 and a half inches. Day two had 17.5. Uh, and there I weighed three small mouths, all of which were like three and a quarter to three and a half. And then two large mouths, which were like three, three and a quarter, something like that. So 17.5 on that uh, second day total. Um, so as it turned out, my this was this was my strategy. I knew that uh, if a guy could put together two consecutive limits of smallmouth, he was going to do well in this tournament. But that's a lot easier said than done. Uh, the smallmouths are just their their over their overall sizes. They average much better than the largemouths, and the likelihood of getting five four pound small mouths is greater than getting five four pound large mouths so that was the deal the winner was going to have two consecutive bags of small mouth that's what i knew going into it so my entire practice revolved around small mouth fishing i i mean i literally spent almost all my almost all my time smallmouth fishing, just maybe an hour of largemouth fishing in, pra in official practice. So, uh, and what I, and I found, you know, I found that the smallmouths were very wary, very finicky about what they wanted to eat. I also found that, uh, that indeed the average size was really good having actually hooked a couple of them you know in the five pound class and four pound plus class fish over the course of the five days of practice um and i felt like i found enough that when it came down to competition you know i was going to go after the small mouse and that was my plan the plan was to spend start the morning on smallmouth and stay with them as long as I could take it until if I didn't have my limit, then there got to be, <clears throat> then there was going to be a, a, a cutoff time where I switched to largemouths just to go fill my limit. And then whatever remaining time I had after, once I filled my limit, I was going to go back to the smallmouth. So that was the plan. And hopefully the plan was hopefully I won't have to go to the largemouth. So, okay, so on day one, I, uh, I was boat like 27, I think it was, uh, 203. So good boat draw to get out there and get on some prime uh, hab smallmouth habitat. Uh, I was pretty much focusing on the boulder smallmouths. They're probably, I think that it sounds like there might've been some weed and sand smallmouths, but I wasn't after those. I was after the boulder smallmouth. So that's what I keyed on. Um, 12 foot was a good depth for me. Uh, you know, obviously you could find some shallower, some deeper, but 12 feet seemed to be, uh, you know, that seemed to hit the target best for me. So day one, I picked out some boulders I wanted to fish, start on, and, uh, and it was, and what it was really important was that first hour to two, that first hour to two hours was really important 
because that's when the smallmouths were w actually willing to eat your whatever presentation it was. That's when they're willing to go for it. Once, this, once it got later in the day, and especially if you were in a community area, uh, these fish had, you know, by, the, by later in the day, these fish had seen multiple lures. The only fish that hadn't been caught are the ones that were the most finicky, the ones that were most neutral, most not wanting to bite that particular morning or day yet. So that first bit of hour, hour and a half was the most important to actually get the bites. <clears throat> And I ended up getting three bites in the first 45 minutes, not even, maybe first half hour that first morning. The first two bites, and I, they came unhooked. And that hurt bad. It, that just was, it, because I've had this pro. I've been running into problems like this all year. It's been an ongoing, uh, this thorn in my side of key fish coming unhooked. It's been a big issue this year, and here we are again. Here we are again. I know how t I know how difficult it is going to be to fill my limit of smallmouths, and I lose two big ones. Uh, reeled each one about 20 feet to the boat, 25 feet to the boat, um, and then they just simply came unhooked. They didn't jump. They didn't do anything like that. They just came unhooked, and yes. I mean, 99% chance they were both smallmouths. But then I finally caught one, you know, one that was four, four and a quarter, something like that, um, probably 10 minutes later. So at least I had the one. And then literally, I didn't catch my second one. I didn't have my second bite until like 11, <laughs> 11, 15, something like that. And then it got to be noon. Now I got a 250 check in. It got to be noon. And then that's when I pulled the plug on the smallmouth program and went largemouth fishing. So I had two nice, beautiful smallmouths because my second one was as well, you know, at least four pounds, maybe a little more. So I had two just really nice smallmouths. And it was time to just go find some largemouth. So with the largemouths, see, the thought there is. Um, and by the way, we have a 15 inch minimum size limit for this tournament. So a 15 inch largemouth is going to weigh two, two pounds or better out of Leech Lake because they're thick. They're thick bass. And the smallies are really, the smallies are some of the thickest smallies around. They are, not only is their belly thick, but their shoulders are thick too. They're just wide body smallmouths. They're, they're, the, they're the Charles Barkley of smallmouth on Leech Lake. So, anyway, so now I'm going largemouth fishing. And, um, and, by, and I'll get to the baits uh, eventually here. I'll show you the baits. So I go largemouth fishing, which, you know, so I'm up in the grass and I'm flipping a jig, an all-terrain tackle jig with a Billy Rubs uh, flutter craw. And, and also, um, and I'm throwing a wacky worm also. There's a couple of docks, there's some, uh, some bulrushes, there's some grass, a few lily pads. And after 45 minutes in this one area, I got nothing. I shook off like eight or nine in this exact area in practice, and now I got nothing. The thing was, it was the first day of practice, and after five practice days, and already, you know, and already it's noonish. So, in fact, one of the dock owners commented that there's already been like four guys in the, four guys fishing that area. So, that area completely got burned and wiped out of its population of largemouth. So after 45 minutes of that, I got nothing to show for it. Very disappointed. So I pull the plug and make about a 15 minute run, 10, 15 minute run to a different largemouth area. And 
I start catching some fish. They're short ones. They're non-keepers. I got thrown back. But then I catch a keeper. And then I catch two more keepers and a few more short ones eventually. Flipping a jig. Caught them all on my jig. But they were, these were, these keepers were 15 and a quarter to 15 and a half inches. They weren't huge. But as soon as I got the fifth one, um, I had about 20 minutes left of fishing time. And I went back to smallmouth fishing for that last 20 minutes. Went to some prime boulders where I seen some fish earlier in the day that went bite. And again, they went bite, you know, they went bite again. And that's the thing, you see so many fish that come up and look at your lures and then they fade away and swim away. And these are smallmouths. Um, they're not walleyes, because I know what the walleyes do. I know what the walleyes look like, for the most part. I'm not 100% on that, but uh, I'm, I'm getting really good at telling walleyes from smallmouths. But not every time, because sometimes they can fake you out. But when you see what they look like, you see, I mean, when you see a big boulder and, and three fish peel off of it and they circle and dance all around your bait, those are like smallmouths. So, although there are some big rock bass that were hanging on big boulders too. I mean, big rock bass, like one and a half, two pounders. I swear I had one hook that was like two and a half pounds that came unhooked. So there are some big rock bass and they can kind of fake you out, but they don't quite behave quite the same as the smallmouth when they come up and look at your bait. So, but, but they, you can make a mistake on those as well as far as seeing them on the Lawrence uh, active target. So anyway, so that was my catch the first day. Uh, and that's all I caught were those five keepers. Um, 15 pounds, 13 ounces, five keepers. So day two comes and I'm gonna go with the same strategy. And by the way, this is a tournament where day one was canceled. And so day, the new day one was actually day two and the new day two was actually day three. And normally day three is just a top 10 fish, but in this case we had, they had no day three. So everybody fished the full two days, the Friday and Saturday, just to get that out of the way. All right, so now day two. So I'm not changing my strategy one bit for day two. Um, I'm sitting in 65th place. I got, I'm pretty confident the weights are going to take a hit on day two. And by that, I mean the full field of fishermen are not going to catch as many bass on day two as they did on day one. That's, and that's simply because leech lake largemouths are dumb. Um, so when you get in an area and start catching them, you're catching most of them. Not catching all of them, but you're catching a lot of them. So all those largemouths uh, areas, they've been hit, they've been, you know, thrashed. There's, obviously you don't catch them all, but you catch a lot of them. So there's gonna be a, a definite uh, dwindling in supply of the largemouths in the largemouth areas. And with the smallmouths, um, they're much finicky, much more finickier, but still, it's it's kind of a small population. Not I won't say small, but it's not a huge population of smallmouths, and I, I just felt like they're going to take a hit too. Plus, it's five days. I mean, we had five days of practice, one tournament day, you know, and add a tournament day, so that's six days. These fish are just get pressured. So, because of those reasons, I felt like the catch wasn't going to be as strong by the full field. So I felt like if I hit 18 pounds, I was going to get a check. At first I thought 19, but then I rethought about it. I'm like 18. And as it turns out, 17.5 moved me from 65th to 32nd. So the, the, cat, the overall catch of the field fell off worse than I even thought it was going to. But anyway, so how I did it, I went for smallmouths right away in the morning again because I knew that's the key window and I struggled right away I wasn't seeing any 
I wasn't seeing any fish on my Lawrence Executive Target around the boulders I was fishing. Nothing was happening. And it was probably it was probably well into an hour into the morning when I finally pulled up on a boulder that had some fish around it. And sometimes a boulder will have fish around it, but they're on the other side of the boulder or they're glued to the bottom. They just don't separate out from the boulder. It's only once you cast to the boulder then all of a sudden you see fish rise up out of the image of the boulder and separate out. Um, but this, but I finally found a boulder that actually had fish separated out from the boulder itself. <clears throat> and uh, but it, it, I, after fishing there all week, I knew that was no guarantee of nothing <laughs> because I, I've thrown at countless boulders just like that, where you see fish, sep multiple fish separated out from the boulder, and none of them bite. But I threw in there, and lo and behold, I got one to bite. And I put him in the boat, put him in the live well. It was uh, one of the fish I ended up weighing. Uh, so after that, I make about one or two more casts to the boulder. Second bite, second fish comes in, smallie comes in the boat. So now I got two, just like that. I mean, they're not as big as the two smallies I had the day before, but hey, I'll take it. Because they were like three and a quarter, three and a half, something like that. Um, and then, of course, I throw out that boulder a bunch more and nothing happens. But probably 10, 15 minutes later, on a boulder nearby, not even a boulder, I just threw out to, it was just a grouping of smaller rock, but, but more like medium rock, not big boulder, but medium rock. I threw over there. And I wasn't even really paying attention to my lure. I was kind of scanning around looking at another, you know, looking for another giant boulder to throw at. And I got bit and it was another smallmouth. This one was probably like a 15 and a quarter, the 15 and a half inch fit. I, I did put them on the board and uh, I didn't really, I mean, I just threw them on the board and I saw oh, this could be no problem. So I didn't really like dial in the exact length, but it was like 15 and a quarter to 15 and a half inches from, from what I saw. So now I had three, and, I, and I'm like jacked. I'm like keyed. I mean, I'm like, yeah, you know. And not only that, I, just, I, I had made a uh, bait switch. You know, prior to that, I wasn't catching them, and now I made a bait switch to catch these three, and now I'm like just pumped. I'm like, okay, I've, I've unlocked the lake. I've unlocked it. So now I'm thinking every boulder I'm going to, I'm going to start catching fish on this bait. Nope. <laughs> nope. I saw so many bass swim up to this lure the rest of the morning and give me the Heisman. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, and every boulder you, you pull up on, you just think, okay, I didn't, it didn't work on the last one, but man, this bait is, this is the one that unlocked those three and then I'd throw out at the next boulder and a fish would rise up off of it and check it out and then fade back down and <laughs> into the bottom so many times so many times and finally it got to be noon right i got a four well i got a later check-in because i had a late boat number so i think it was yeah 440 check-in so it got to be noon or even a little later and i'm i pulled the plug i'm like you know what i'll go i've got you know, three hours to go get largemouths, and and like and I and I don't have many largemouth areas. And one thing I forgot to say about the largemouth area that I picked, where I did catch them on day one. You know, first area sucked, second area worked. That area, I never even practiced that area. Never even practiced it. It's a spot that I found before the off limits cutoff period, and I hadn't been back to it. But I was. I felt like I felt like it was the type of spot where fish would be there, and as a child, there was. So now here it's day two. I'm going largemouth fishing again. I'm going right to that area where I caught my largemouth the day before, because I never really fished the whole area. So I actually started uh, a ways away from where I actually caught them to work my way towards the area where I did catch them, and that was a waste of time <laughs> because. 
because I've fished and I fished and I've worked, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to where I caught them. And once I got to there where I caught them the day before, well, that's where I started catching them again. And I ended up catching, um, so I only needed two and I caught two. And they were nicer ones than compared to the day before. These were like 16 and a half inches, nice, which is a three pounds, you know, three pound type fish, three and a quarter uh, on Leech Lake. Um, so I'm like, all right, that's cool. I got my limit. And so then I fished that area. I didn't go right to the back to the largemouth just yet because I had I had a smaller largemouth or small that one fifteen and a quarter, fifteen and a half smallmouth in there, and I'm like, and you can always catch a four to five pound largemouth out of Leech Lake, and I and the, these areas that I picked it, before the off limits, I did catch one over four pounds, and then I had another area where I caught another good one, so I actually went to this other area now, which was in the same vicinity, about a mile away. And I went over there and started fishing and fishing, and sure enough, I caught me like a three and a quarter to three and a half pound largemouth um, to cull out that that smallmouth because that was that that was my smallest one. And then at that point, I made about five. I probably fished another five minutes, and I'm like, you know what? I got to let's go back to the smallmouth program. And I ended the I ended the day fishing about an hour and a half of small mouse and I did catch one and that called out my smallest large mouth and that's how I got my total of uh, um, 17.5 all right so now let's talk about the baits show you the baits uh, when I caught my small mouse on the first day all four all four bites came on this bait right here this little it's a little Ned rig okay that's a three thirty-second ounce. Um, they call it the Hail Mary. Ned, Hail Mary Ned is what they call that. It says that right on the bottom, all terrain tackle. So that's the head, um, and then this Ned is uh, poured by Billy Rub Bates. He poured this. I don't even know if he has this mold anymore. I don't think. I don't know if he put these on the market, but. In practice, as I was cycling through baits in practice, I mean, I was trying everything. In, I mean, I got so many plastics, so many finesse plastics, and I was trying them all. And this little three inch was the one I decided was what I was gonna put my money on. And that's how I had all four bites, was on 332nd ounce. In practice, I caught some on a quarter ounce head, just like this, uh, but I felt like I want, it felt like this lighter jig was, I just had more confidence. In the end, I don't know which would, I don't know if I would have done better with the quarter ounce versus this, but this is what I had the confidence in. So that was that bait. Now, the, uh, the second day on the small mouse, like I said, uh, I thought I unlocked the lake. And that was simply with a four inch, weightless uh, uh, stick bait um, and you had to wait a long time I mean, I mean you get to get it to go down 12 feet to where the boulder is I mean you throw it out there and you sit there and you wait and you want I'll have my Lawrence active target just dialed in on the bait just staring at it and it's just it's like sinking like you know if this the top of the frame here is the surface and then down here is 12 feet i mean it's it's like <laughs> it's like this and it's killing you and and, and i'm throwing at boulders that I, that seem like you know like I, I already talked about it some some boulders you see fish some you don't so there, i'm throwing it so when you throw it at a boulder where you don't really see a fish it's like, uh, <laughs> you just don't, you don't know what you're waiting for. And then you, you just, you're just waiting and hoping to see a fish peel out of the image of the boulder and come up to your bait, which 
And, and when that happens, it's, it's so exciting. It's so intense because, because you have this, this patience of, and this, this anticipation of this, of this fish peeling off the boulder. And, and then it, once it peels off, you're like, Oh my God, yes, yes, yes. And then, and, but then, you know, okay, that's only like 25% of the battle. He still has to eat it, which most of them don't. So you're just like, and then you'll see, a lot of times you'll see the image of the fish and the bait like meet together. And then you're like, just like, you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then, then I'll like pull, pull the line tight a little bit. <laughs> most of the time it's like, oh shit, there's nothing there. And then you see the image of the fish fade away. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh dang it. All right. So. That was, those were the two smallmouth baits. Now, when it came to the largemouth, uh, and let me other, let me say this: I tried multiple other bait. Dry, I never, never caught one fish on a drop shot in practice or in the tournament. No matter what leader length I put on there, no matter what type of plastic, what size, little finesse plastics, little tiny swim baits bigger stick baits, uh, bigger swim baits, uh, uh, craw little crawfish looking things. A lot of crayfish in Leech Lake, by the way. It, did, it didn't matter. My drop shot got absolutely shut out. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you, you couldn't go out there and catch them on a drop shot. I'm just telling you that I didn't catch any on a drop shot. Um, what I mean, I did catch some in practice on an all-terrain tackle football jig with a, uh, a twin tail trailer on there, but that was under cloudy, windy conditions and on the first day of practice. And actually, I was, on that day, I was fishing deeper. I was fishing more like 14 to 18, and I did catch some out there, but. Uh, it seems like in, in conditions outside of cloudy and windy conditions, I, I, I mean, every time I threw that at a boulder, it got nothing. You know, if it was just mild, sunny, relatively calm or light winds, I got nothing on that jig. So I kind of got away from it in the tournament. I still had it tied up, still made some casts with it. I did make casts with it, but it, it was a non-producer. Non um, the other thing was the... Uh, the marabou jig. I had fish swim up to that, look at it, not eat it. Um, I did not commit to it as much as I did the Ned rig. Uh, I heard word of some guys catching some on on it, so maybe I needed a stronger commitment to it. Um, I mean, I've I have faith in that bait. I just didn't. I just didn't. I don't know. I guess I'm used to it more as a uh, uh, earlier in the year kind of a. I mean, I know they catch them pre-spawn. I mean, maybe I just need to accept that it's a any any time of the year kind of a bait for smallmouths. But I always just to me, I really tie it closely with the post-spawn smallmouth period, which could be a mistake on my part. So, and then top, I tried top waters. And I mean, I'd see them. They they went they wouldn't come for it. They would not go for my top water. They'd rise up off the boulder a little ways, kind of maybe follow it underneath, and then go down. And I tried a couple. I didn't try a whole lot of different top waters. Just a few, and but I felt like you know I didn't really dedicate myself to it that much because. You, it's such a rare opportunity that you can even throw a top water on Leech Lake because there's so much wind exposure. So that's a top water. And then the other bait is the jerk bait. Now, I actually thought I might be able to catch them on a jerk bait. And I did catch one short smallmouth on that jerk bait. But, because um, I caught some in practice on it, not a lot, but I did catch some. And they seem hot at it. They seem hot. It seemed like something that could trigger them. But in the tournament, it just it didn't pan out. I didn't throw it a ton, but I did throw it at certain times. 
and like I said, I did catch one short one, but that just, I don't know. I, I, a jerk bait is definitely something I'd keep in my hand. I, I mean, I'd keep that ready to go on that lake because I think they'll fire. I think, I, I still believe you can fire them up on that thing. All right, so now that's all the smallmouth baits. Now with largemouth fishing, I didn't get very elaborate. I'd like put this jig in my hand and, uh, well, actually I did, um, I didn't even pull that bait out, but this was the, this was the primary individual right here. This is an all train tackle, uh, AT jig. Um, the skirt is a custom skirt that I put, that I, that I, uh, uh, it's an aftermarket skirt. This is a Billy Rub Flutter Craw. Uh, Billy Rub baits, by the way, come in packages that look like this. And I don't, this, you know, it was just flipping the grass with this. So, um, pretty simple. That was, I didn't fish it any particular special way. I just flip it out there and let it hit bottom, uh, hop it a couple times, reel it in, pitch it again. Simple as that. I also did catch one, I did catch one of my keepers the first day, also on, on a Nico rig, uh, like a five, like a five inch uh, ringworm type bait. Um, so yeah, but that, that was the largemouth fishing. So. There you have it. I'm happy I got in the money. Happy I made the comeback on day two. Uh, but overall, being that it was home court, I was just a little bit disappointed. Congratulations to East and uh, Father Yale. Uh, they do well in tournaments. They've got a good history of doing well in tournaments out there. Uh, good to see a Minnesota fisherman win i've made mention of that in the video i mean i have friends from other states and um and i <laughs> i just have pride i just have pride in the fishermen that are from our state and pride in that hey we you know we can get it done and we can hold home court and Easton did that for us Minnesota anglers. You know, it's the last thing I wanted to see somebody from uh, out of state come in here and win this tournament. That's, uh, and I got, I mean, that's just, that's just a pride thing. I love my, I love my Southern anglers, but when you can bring, come to Minnesota, it ain't, we're not going to make it easy on you. That's all. I guess that's the whole point. We don't want to make it too easy for you guys. And I knew, I knew there was going to be a serious threat for people from people out of state to win this thing because so many of these guys are just, just highly skilled with their forward sonar, which a lot of, a lot of this fishing was that type of fishing. So, all right, that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, if you're still here at the end, thanks, it, uh, thanks for watching the whole thing. And uh, that's all I got. Over and out.